Vaporeon is an excellent Pokemon. It has great base stats, excellent HP, good special. It kind of is the ultimate package for a solo run. There's a good chance that it could beat the times of the other evolutions in Pokemon Yellow. But just how fast can it go? It does get a huge advantage from its initial learn set because it has Water Gun right off the bat. Obviously, this is going to be the perfect situation for Brock later, but it also does great damage against other Pokemon like Eevee in the lab battle. While Water Gun doesn't have any secondary effects, it has great PP and decent base power for the early game. Especially with the same type attack bonus, it should work out excellently. In fact, while we're headed to Brock, we're going to skip all the non-mandatory trainers in the forest too. Meaning we will only be level 6 as we get to the end of the forest. Luckily we can find a Pidgey right before the end, and we can catch it and name it Porygon. Thank you so much Porygon Dollier for supporting the channel and being subscribed, you're awesome. If you want a chance to see your name in these videos, make sure to subscribe, leave comments, and if you like this video, make sure to drop a like so that you can see more of these in the future. With that, we can beat the only trainer that's required in Viridian Forest. At only level 7, we're going to be getting to Pewter City. This is obviously very low level, but we actually don't need that much preparation before Brock. In fact, the Light Years trainer is all the experience we really need. Here, the super effective Water Gun does great damage and it can get us to level 8 where we can learn Sand Attack. Now, if you remember, Jolteon really needed this move, and Flareon maybe used it once or twice, if that. But Vaporeon doesn't even really need it at all today. Because as we go into the battle against Brock, it has 4 times damage against his rock and ground Pokemon, so it can just make quick work of these two. In fact, it takes them both out in a single hit. And with that, we can move on to Route 3, where it also has no problems at all. As you may have noticed already, I named the Vaporeon Moist, which uh, I apologize for right up front, but uh, it's because, did you know? Well, maybe we won't even talk about it. It has so much HP that even in battles where I don't heal up, it just doesn't take enough damage to really make that much of a difference. It can just plow through all these trainers and get some extra experience in Mount Moon as well. Unfortunately for Vaporeon, it actually doesn't get an advantage like Jolteon did against Misty. So I'm a little bit worried about our damage output for Misty. Vaporeon does not have very good attack. In fact, its attack and defense are really the biggest drawbacks for its base stats. Luckily for the most part, I don't have to rely on those stats today, but uh, for Misty it might be a problem. We can get up to level 15 before the Super Nerd and we can take him out as well. Against the Super Nerd, Water Gun does great damage. Even without super effective damage, Vaporeon's base 110 special is awesome. So the bulk it has from its high HP stat as well as the damage it has from the high special is a great combination for a solo run. After we defeat Team Rocket, we can start heading towards Celadon City. And here I think going to Misty first may be the best tactic because we need Bubble Beam to go extra extra fast for this next portion of the game. And Brock actually gave us, I think, the best solution, at least at this point, for Misty, and that's Bide. So I don't use Bide very much, and in a lot of battles, like this Goldeen Trainer, it's not terribly useful because we can just deal okay damage with other moves. But in Misty's fight, we know that she's not going to use her water moves. This means that she can only use Tackle or Harden or use an X Defend. Because of this, she might stack up a lot of defensive stats. And if we use Bide, we can actually bypass that setup and because of that, we can actually deal pretty consistent damage as long as we time Bide correctly. However, in this first attempt, I kind of second-guessed the Bide strategy and I stopped using it and then with an unfortunate crit timing, I just didn't have the HP to get through it. But I learned my lesson. As I go into the second attempt, I really stick with Bide and I trust that it's going to work. And with our high HP, we can deal back a lot of damage and we can actually take the win. This will allow Vaporeon to learn Bubble Beam. And this is going to be probably the best water move until Surf. I don't plan on using Hydro Pump today, it's just not as good as Surf, well at least not as consistent. And after picking up the rare candy over here behind the house in Cerulean City, we can head over to the rival. And with Bubble Beam, the rival's team is going to just be a piece of cake. We don't quite take out Spiro in the first hit, which maybe is a little unfortunate. Luckily it can't do that much to us anyway, and obviously Bubble Beam is a great answer for Sandshrew. After that, Rattata really isn't a problem, and Eevee is kind of the same as it was in the lab battle, just a little underwhelming. And with the trainers on Nugget Bridge defeated, I can pick up Charmander. I named Charmander Maria. Thank you so much, Maria, for being subscribed and watching the videos. You're awesome. With that, we can defeat all of the necessary trainers here above Celadon City on Route 25 before we get to Bill's house. And Vaporeon is just flying through all these required trainers. It's not a super high level, but the combination of Bubble Beam and Quick Attack is just a good enough set to make this a really easy and painless run. We can get to the SSN and we can pick up a few required items and rest as well. Here we also get access to Body Slam. So that's going to be the best physical move for Vaporeon in the whole run. I'm not going to rely on it too much. It is useful for a couple of opponents like Alakazam or Kadabra, 
but for the most part, water and ice moves later are going to be the best options. The Rivals team on the SSN is also not a problem with this set, so we can go ahead and defeat him and watch the SSN sail off into the horizon. With that, we have a big challenge here in Marillion City, and that's Lieutenant Surge. So Surge may have the best gym options against us. Later, Erica with her grass typing is actually weak to ice, but he has bad AI, so he just misses a Mega Punch and then goes down pretty easily. He might have been good with good AI. I don't know why some of the gym leaders don't have it in these games. With that, we get our bike voucher and we can head over to pick up Squirtle. We're going to name Squirtle Ice Dragoon today. Thank you so much, Ice Dragoon, for watching the videos and commenting. That'll be our last subscriber for today, but if you want to see yourself here, make sure to get subscribed and let me know if you have any ideas in the comments of other future videos you want to see. With that, I can head back to Cerulean City and I can pick up the bike to head toward Rock Tunnel. Here, there is one trainer that may be an issue and that's the Wrapping Lass. If you can't knock her Pokemon out in a single hit, there are chances for her to set up status moves as well as wrap, and it can become a problem. And Vaporeon has that issue today, it just doesn't have enough attack to be able to knock them out, but luckily it just gets poisoned. So that really was the best case scenario if I was going to get hit with a status move. After that, Vaporeon through the tunnel doesn't really have any problems. I mean, there are a couple of slow pokes, which will be a little bit slow to knock out, just because they resist Bubble Beam and Body Slam just doesn't do a lot against their high defense. And then the status trainer here with her Oddish and Bulbasaur could maybe be a problem, but Vaporeon actually does quite well. With Body Slam and Quick Attack, it can take the win. And with that, we're onto the self-destructing hiker, and with Bubble Beam, he's not a problem. Other Pokemon that don't have special moves can really struggle against him, but Vaporeon has an easy breezy time today. And with that, we're off to the mid-game. I just have one trainer here on the way to Celadon City to defeat and a couple of items to pick up. But Vaporeon is doing extremely well, and I predicted it would do the best out of the original three evolutions, but I was curious just how good it would be. It's only about 24 minutes of real time into the playthrough when I get to the Pokemon Mart and sell all these items and pick up the stuff I need, so that's a very, very good time. And here there's a couple of very important items for Vaporeon as we get later into the game. First of all, we can pick up our Poke Dolls, of course, and the repels that we will need, but also if you go up to the top floor, you can pick up Ice Beam, and we can also pick up a bunch of vitamins. Now for the vitamins, I went with Carbos because I feel like the speed stat for Vaporeon may be a big weakness in the later gyms. It's just not very fast, but I think that it will have the damage and the health it needs to get through the rest of the problems. But with that, I can add Ice Beam to my moveset, I can pick up Fly as well outside of Celadon City, and I can fly off to fight the rival in the Pokemon Tower. Ice Beam is an awesome move to have in this battle because Firo will go down very easily. Sometimes it can use Mirror Move to really cause issues if you use normal type moves like Body Slam. But Vaporeon doesn't have that issue today, and in fact, Bubble Beam makes really quick work of the rest of the team. It's just about as good as Ice Beam because of Stab, and, and it has great PP, so these battles really are just a breeze. It doesn't have any problems with any of the Ghastlies or Chandlers in the tower, and we can get up to fight Team Rocket at the top of the tower. I'm starting to predict that Vaporeon may actually need very little additional training. It actually might be able to finish at a lower level than the other Evolutions as well. It has a great performance here against Team Rocket, and we can pick up our Pokey Flute, and we can head off back to Celadon City. Now sometimes it's better just to head off to the bike route, go pick up some extra items, get some extra training before you continue with any more gyms, but I think Vaporeon will do an excellent job against Erica's gym today. Especially with Ice Beam, I think it's not going to be a problem. So I can go and defeat every single trainer in her gym just to get the experience there, and then I can skip the experience later on the bike route. Also I can use the PP ups on Ice Beam to give me just more uses of that as we go through the gym here. I thought about using them on Surf as well because I do plan on picking that up, but I think Ice Beam is just going to be more useful in most situations. Surf is good damage against things if I don't have other super effective options, but Ice Beam is going to be really important for the late game. With that, we can get over to the bike route and pick up our items. Like I said, we're going to skip all of these trainers because I don't think Vaporeon's going to need it. We'll fight one guy here at the end just because he is good experience. I do want to be around level 37 or 38 when I get to the rival in Sylph but I don't think we'll need level 40, and I do think that we could use some rare candies earlier in this playthrough because we don't have to be as high level at the end. After I pick up all of the items in the Safari Zone and get Surf, we can head off to Sylph. In Sylph, there's gonna be a couple of basically required trainers here, including the guy with the Machoke on floor 10 because we do want another Carbos and the rare candy here. I'll pick up the Elixir that's hidden in the shrub here on floor five, as well as fight the guy with the Arbok before I pick up the card key. After just another battle or two, I'm ready to fight the rival. And this battle can sometimes be really tricky for some Pokemon. The rival now is starting to have a lot of diversity on his team, including a Magneton and a Cloyster, 
and going into this battle a little bit lower level may have been a little bit risky, but Vaporeon has such great bulk that I'm not that worried about getting knocked out. Sand Slash is obviously a one hit. Cloyster actually takes more damage from Surf than physical moves because of its insanely high defense. And we can do great physical damage against Kadabra, but I should have gone for Quick Attack. I take an extra Confusion hit, so when I go into Flareon, I'm at lower health than I should have been. Now with Sand Attacks, I start missing and I just lose that first fight, just barely. I go back in and I can knock out the first few Pokemon just as easy as it was the last time. Cloyster will only use Super Sonic because the other moves are Water type or Ice type so it can't do that much to me. Even Magneton isn't really an issue. And then I can correct my mistake and not get hit by an extra move at Kadabra, which makes Flareon much easier, and it can go down and we can take out the rival. And with that, we're on to Giovanni. Giovanni is going to always be pretty easy with Vaporeon. I mean, we have ice and water moves, so it's just not gonna be an issue. It's nice to see Vaporeon just be able to clean up these teams, one hit every single member of the team. It just shows how powerful this Pokemon is. And now with Sylph done and Erica defeated, I have a few just rapid fire gems to get through, including Koga first. I am a little bit worried if I don't one hit his Venonats because they will prioritize Sleep Powder against me. This can be a little bit annoying, but Vaporeon can tank a couple of hits. As long as we don't have our special drop too much, which can happen with Psychic, it shouldn't be that bad of a battle. We can inflict status conditions like Paralysis with Body Slam and Freeze with Ice Beam, so if we get into a pinch, that can be a good option. Luckily, we can take a win on the first try. It was a little bit close. It definitely could have been a loss if I wasn't more careful, but it works out today. With him defeated, we can go over and pick up Strength and the Rare Candy in the Warden's House, and we can head off to Sabrina in Saffron. I do also pick up Mimic on the way here, but I'm not going to use that quite yet. I'm pretty confident going into Sabrina's fight, which is why I went here before Blaine. I figured that Body Slam will do great damage, and in all honesty, the Psychic moves, while a kind of broken type in Gen 1, are not that good against Vaporeon. They're only neutral damage, so Vaporeon doesn't take a ton of damage from them, and since Sabrina doesn't really know what to do, the fight isn't that difficult. After Sabrina, I can surf down to Cinnabar Island in order to pick up the items from the Pokemon Mansion and then fight Blaine. I always pick up 10 Super Repels because that gives me just enough to get through all of the main places, including the Pokemon Mansion, without seeing too many wild encounters. Sometimes I do get an extra encounter right at the end of Pokemon Mansion if I haven't used my steps correctly, but I'm always trying to improve my routing and the way that I navigate around the overworld. Obviously, the less times I bonk into things or take the wrong turn, the quicker these playthroughs continue to get. I do pick up the rare candy from the power plant. It does take a moment to do this, but at least in the late game, the extra level is much quicker to get this way than actually training. And for Blaine, I do want to be level 47, specifically for acid armor. This is an incredible move and it does badge boost me. So unlike Reflect, which will not actually apply that, this will allow me to stack up my speed and my special that will help a lot against Blaine. I go into Blaine's fight and I start stacking this up, but I do get burned by the Ninetales, which is really unfortunate. It puts me much more on a timer. So I just have to start using Surf. Luckily, Vaporeon doesn't take a lot of damage now that it has high defense and it resists the fire moves. So it actually takes a pretty easy win here, even with the burn. I guess I didn't need a burn heal after all, Blaine. And with that win, we only have one gym left, and that's Giovanni. Now, Vaporeon does have one problem here that Jolteon did not. Jolteon was fast enough that there were no problems with its speed stat. It can outspeed every single Pokemon. It can't get hit by Fissure, all of that. But Vaporeon is slower than a couple of his Pokemon here, and that does open the door for him to use Fissure as well as Earthquake or Slash on the Persian, which can deal some decent damage. But luckily after that, it's very easy since all of his ground and rock Pokemon take a lot of damage from Surf. Vaporeon, especially with Acid Armor, does quite well here. And now there's only one battle left before the Elite Four, and that's the rival on Route 22, the final rival fight before the League. And even though we're only level 50 here, which sometimes is a little too low for some Pokemon, Ice Beam is awesome against Execute and is gonna be really useful against Executor later. But for the rest of his team, Surf does great damage. Because of our moves that we have and our excellent stats, his team is actually a breeze. So with an easy win against him, we can head off to the Elite Four. We can start a battle against Lorelei, and I was doubting whether or not I needed rest. I wasn't really sure about it, but going into this, I got taken down really low and my special got dropped. So even with high defense, I just don't have enough HP. So if I get hit by anything, like Jinx's Thrash, after being put to sleep with Lovely Kiss, it just is going to be a loss for me. But the other option that I have is to replace Body Slam with Mimic. This would allow me to either steal rest from Dugong, which I could do, or take Amnesia from Slowbro. For this first attempt, Back in here, I did use two rare candies, and I decided that I'm going to try the slow bro amnesia strategy, just because Dugong will be able to go to sleep with rest and not really do that much damage. 
And then Cloyster takes good damage from Surf, so I don't think I need to heal up before Slowbro. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna steal Amnesia and stack this up as quickly as possible so that I can get through Slowbro with decent health. That's the plan here. I know that once my special is stacked up super high, Surf will do good enough damage against Jinx and Lapras too, that it won't be too much of a problem. And that's exactly what happens. We we're able to take out her last two Pokemon with Surf and we get the win. And after defeating Lorelei, who will probably be the hardest member of the Elite Four today, we find this random guy just in here, some random hiker with a couple of Onyxes. In fact, his Machamp uses an X Defend for some reason against a surfing Vaporeon. I don't know what he's doing. Anyway, now we're off to Agatha, and with Mimic, I think that we're actually pretty safe here. Surf and Ice Beam do decent damage, and they're both special, so the ghosts can be hit by them. I don't think it's going to be that much of a problem to go through most of this battle today. And once I get set up with Substitute and a couple of Acid Armors just to get my stats stacked up, Surf does great damage, and we can just kind of walk our way right through her team. So today, Agatha's not an issue. And now we're on to Lance, and we actually already have Ice Beam, so I don't need to mimic it from his team. But I do still have Mimic because I think I want it for the champion. So instead, I'm just going to take out Gyarados as quickly as possible with a couple of Ice Beams. When he's recharging from his Hyper Beam, I do use an Acid Armor just to get a little bit of defense, which he then lowers with Leer, but that continues the badge boost me, which is just excellent to me. I can take out his Dragonairs with Ice Beam, and then if I stack one more time against Aerodactyl, I actually outspeed Aerodactyl. That's how broken these badge boosts are. With a couple of them, Vaporeon can be faster than Aerodactyl which doesn't make any sense. His last Dragonite is no problem again with Ice Beam, and we can move on to the champion. Obviously here we'll use all of our rare candies and prep for the final battle. Now going to this battle, I start off with Acid Armor, and we can see a really goofy animation glitch in Gen 1 here. Animations are always turned on for the champion fight, but when I use Acid Armor, it actually removes Vaporeon's sprite entirely from the screen. This is just one of those weird quirks of the graphics of Gen 1, so we have an invisible Vaporeon for this fight. However, in this first fight, the worst possible thing happens and we get paralyzed by Magneton. Because of that and Leech Seed from the Executor, which it will always use, it takes me forever to knock out Cloyster, and then we get all the way down to 5 HP when I get to the Flareon, and it can just quick attack and knock us out. The obvious solution to this is to teach Rest. This will be able to remove Paralysis and be able to heal us back up. It does not remove the speed debuff from the Paralysis though. Gen 1 is weird that way. So I will be slow if I get paralyzed, even if I heal it, but at least it does improve my chances. Since I know that Executor is going to Leech Seed every time, I can heal up on it though, in order to use Ice Beam. And stealing Earthquake is really key for Magneton, but as long as I don't get paralyzed by Magneton, I have decent enough health. I can even rest up against the Cloyster because it will only use Spike Cannon, which isn't too bad at all. Leech Seed is kind of annoying, but if I just stick it out, just try to get as many attacks off as possible and keep my health at a decent enough level, I can take out the Cloyster and get to the Flareon, and here as long as I'm out of range for it to KO with Quick Attack, I can take it out with Surf, and we can take the win. And with that, Vaporeon has finished Yellow Version. It got a real time of 59 minutes and 55 seconds, under 1 hour! Excellent job Vaporeon, a game time of 3 hours and 41 minutes, with only 4 resets. It's a very solid Pokemon, it's very consistent. It has great moves, including Ice Beam and Surf, as well as Acid Armor. An excellent set, really. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to show some love for Vaporeon, like the video, leave a comment if you would like, and there will be more coming soon. So until next time, have a wonderful day.